Okay, I've got it all figured out. Victory is assured today, it just might take a few minutes. It all starts with this beaver with the beautiful hat. We're going to re-roll, then we're going to put down a horse and then another beaver just to make sure we're efficiently spending money to start. I'm going to put the strong beaver up front. We're going to freeze the horse right where he sits because I might want him for next round. And the friendly hands are marching into battle. That's not an army you want to fight against. How this battle is going to go, I'm not entirely sure, but it doesn't also matter that much. We're going to lose and I'm okay with that. Because we have more or less what I wanted to happen. We kind of needed three of a kind of something. Horses aren't my favorite, but we can make them work. Especially now, considering we can stack two beavers to make a little bit of room, then put a mosquito up, and then the horses are going to all feed the mosquito, so he's now a 5-2 for one turn. We can roll if we want to in case there's anything we want to hold on to. There's not. Then again, I'm going to keep this horse, just in case we want to super level a horse. Probably don't, but I like to keep my options open. Then now my team is strong enough, I should be able to go through a team like this. I mean, that guy doesn't even get to attack. These ants are going to bolster something behind them as they go. But I think we're going to be okay because this is a 5-2 mosquito. Then we're going to take out the pig in three shots because he's going to have a B. So it's a 4-1. Yeah, actually it's a draw. But that's okay. The fishy muffins get a draw. The beginning is just kind of whatever anyways. And I've realized here through these I'm often worried about getting new animals. I should just worry about making my existing animals probably a little bit stronger. Plus if we buy a beaver we'll get a new uh, tier 3 unit and I'm actually going to freeze that. Then I'm going to stack one of the horses and buy another one. Then we are going to freeze a cupcake and roll. And then looking at what we got, I'm probably going to sacrifice another round, but I'm going to freeze this crab for next round. Again, this is basically a sacrificial battle anyway. I don't care what happens. Because now I can start to do a little more interesting things. Like if I give the beaver this, he goes up to 7-7. Seven, seven. Then if we stack two horses together and buy a crab, the crab is going to emulate that 7 health. So he jumps up to 3-7 already. Plus the horse bonus, he gets 5-7. I'm going to freeze that for a second. We're going to take a spin. Oh, I wish I saw the cupcake earlier. The crab could have been a 10. But sometimes that's just the way it goes. For now, we're just going to give the beaver a cupcake. And that's hopefully going to guarantee us this round. And we'll wait for better creatures. So having a 15-10 beaver to start is probably not the worst idea in the world that we're going to trade with him. But that's okay because this will be a winnable battle for us. It's been a while since we had a victory, but they should hopefully come more frequently now. And now we also get tier 3 animals, but that also means if I combine two animals to upgrade them, we're going to get a free tier 4. And that's actually a pretty good one because the bison will simply gain a boost if there's a level 3 animal on the board, which we will hopefully get. There's actually another fun strategy we can do. We're going to get rid of the mosquito. We're going to prop the bison up. He's going to get a big boost from the horse. We're going to put the turtle up. He's also going to get a boost. But then we're also going to kill the turtle with this because he's going to give permanent melon armor to the bison. And then we get a free spin. Garlic armor also would have been acceptable here. Uh, instead, we kind of just need to put something up front. So I'm maybe going to throw another crab out there just for temporary. Then we can stack the crabs later anyways. Also going to save the garlic armor. So by sacrificing a few rounds earlier, this is now my lineup, which is pretty good. It can be beaten, but I'm liking this more than my past few turns. So to start, we get a 5-7 elephant that we are uh, definitely going to kill. And then we're going to take out the horse, which spawns a bumblebee, which is unfortunately going to take my melon armor. But what can you do? And then we're pretty much just going to plow the rest of the way through because I can. Another victory for the friendly hands. So now we're just waiting for more, uh, I don't know what, basically anything we feel like we could use. What I'll do for now is just go like that. I just wanted a bit stronger of a crab. I'll probably give the apple to him. I should be stacking horses though also. I always forget to do that. Then I think I'm going to put a flamingo up front just because he'll give them a boost. Then I think I'm also going to give an apple to the bison for now. We get one more horse and he's going to start leveling right away. I should have worked harder to get that, but that's fine. It's what we call a fluid strategy. Um, that's a really strong peacock, so that's a little bit annoying to run into. But we're going to draw. I take it. The rude nuts. Now I just need a horse. I always find horses when I don't need them. But we did also get a hippo, and hippos are also very strong. So we're going to go ahead and boost everything there. I'm going to sell you gonna put you there and we're able to put garlic armor on him right away i would rather get another horse right now to be perfectly honest with you but we just don't get what we want all the time we're also gonna save you and we're gonna throw uh, garlic armor on you and that's gonna help us roll forward one of the things i realized is that by the time you buy these tier four or five six animals they come with pretty good stats anyway so they can be pretty unstoppable especially when they're about to knock out things like that because they heal themselves they hit that they heal themselves they trade with that and they just keep on trucking that kangaroo is going to be a bit of a problem luckily we have a horse at the end keeping it real victory number three 
and we were lucky enough to actually get the last horse. So now every turn that bison gets a plus two, plus two. And we have some good options here, so it's going to be a matter of how I want to do this. I think since the bison is naturally going to level, I'm going to give a pair to the hippo. And since I have the horse, it's actually a good idea to throw the deer up front. So we're going to get rid of the beaver. He's actually going to boost some other idiots. The crab is also expendable, but not quite yet. Deer goes up front. The deer turns into a 6-2. When it spawns the bus, it's going to turn into an 8-5 bus. Then we're just going to stack another bison on top of a bison to make a bison tower. And this actually isn't too bad of a lineup. There was a bit of a transitional turn, so I don't know if we're going to win, but I hope so. I also have no idea why I didn't reorganize these. But that's okay, because to start, that bus is going to come out, become an 8-5. He's going to wreck everything. The hippo's going to kill the elephant, and then we're going to take out the peacock. We still had, well... A lot of health left because of the melon armor. That melon armor trick early on will actually put you way ahead. So we're getting to the point now we do actually have a turkey and a rooster sort of thing popping up already. I think I'm actually going to take with the crab for the turkey for now or I'm at least going to freeze that and spin once to see what kind of stuff we get because I already like this better. We can boost the turkey up to that. The crab's going to go. He's going to go there. He's simply going to be a boost for when the bus spawns because now that bus is going to be super powerful. We're also going to give some chocolate to the bison. Now he's going to get plus four, plus four every single turn. If I really want to try hard this, I might try and get the melon armor onto the hippo, but we could probably naturally buy it soon anyway. I'm liking this lineup so far. He's already 16, 17, and there's a hippo in front of him that's pretty mean. Teams like this are always going to be a problem though, but the bus becomes 11, 8. We took out him, and the bison's going to steamroll basically everyone else on the team. Why are they called Naughty User and the Willing Masseuses? That's not good. And I'm actually liking this team so much, I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out and throw this out. We're just kind of kind of boost what's here for a moment, unless we find something much better. Uh, we will stack some deer on top of deer, because if we can make that bus even better, we absolutely will. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He's up to 2021 now. And if we get something else behind him, maybe that could also help. Because these teams are going to get pretty strong. I'm kind of uh, going to miss that hippo. Because now this is a problem for us. We did lose that one, but only by four. And we did get a monkey. So what I'm going to do here is... This is a tricky one because I've got so many good options. It's hard to pick one. Strangely, the turkey, I think, is the one that's going to have to go. I think it's going to have to look something like this maybe now. Because I just want a really strong whatever up front. So we're going to sacrifice him. This is the controversial choice of this game. I acknowledge that now. Then we're going to put this on here. Because I just need a bison that can actually absorb some of these idiots up front. I'm going to uh, save this for next round. I'm going to probably buy a monkey now. But I'm also going to spin in case I get something amazing. The tiger is pretty good. If I get this monkey one level up, he'll be giving plus 6 every turn. We're going to have a bison that's getting plus 10 basically every turn at that point plus 10 then we could swap him out for the hippo but he's all the way up to 29 and 30 with melon armor so you need to do 50 damage to one shot him and we know the uh dolphin's not up to the task plus we got a bus on the rear so that's gonna look something like that we still had a bus a hippo and a monkey okay another amazing creature is actually the boar he's actually better than the hippo by quite a bit which is hard to imagine so for my next controversial move, I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to sell the hippo, which is not a comfortable choice. I'm going to put him here. The monkey's also going to help to boost him. I hope I don't regret this choice. This is another uh, one that's a little bit tough. But you know what? What we'll is go with it. You got to take risks sometimes. And we're definitely going to take the chocolate next round. So at least now the bison's going to get the nice boost. Uh, and then so is the boar. He's 22 and 14. And he's going to get a bonus before he attacks every time. So he's going to hit the rhino and he's going to keep upping his stats as long as he's still alive. So he tore all the way to there and then they have to deal with the bison in behind. Which is not somewhere you want to be. We still have all this for them to get through. So I'm definitely getting some pretty fortunate stuff this time. I'm going to give chocolate to the monkey. He's going to give the boar a 6 plus 6 every single turn. I'm just going to spin once. I do want to use maybe these. Oh, that's also a really good thing to put in behind one of these two. Because if I put the snake behind the boar, every time the boar attacks, which is often, he'll do 5 damage. So I'm going to freeze him for now while I think about that. And I'm just going to boost the stats twice in case I do want to buy him because he'll already be 16 and 11. And the boar is up to 25, 20. <clears throat> I would feel much better if he had uh, armor. But um, I think overall we're going to be okay. That was a lot closer than it had to be. But we're trophy eight and we could still lose a round in between. So I'm feeling pretty optimistic. So I think what I'm going to do now is just drop some sushi to boost some idiots along the way. Then I'm going to give an apple to the boar. I just want him to be as tough as possible right now. 
tempted to just throw some steak on him also at some point just to give him stupid damage. So I'm going to freeze out for a sec. We're going to spin once or twice. Melon armor or something would have been better, but this will probably work. So it's definitely good having two units this strong because they'll probably tank through most of everything. Like this fish is already doomed. The boar is going to get stronger. The kangaroo is doomed. Then this guy's got so much health, he's just going to chew through everything else. Nothing stands a chance whatsoever. Trophy number nine. I would put this snake in, but only if he was level two. That way he could do 10 damage per turn. Five damage per turn is fine, but it's not going to add up to enough for me to really care. So unless I get another snake, we're going to go ahead and just give everyone some pizza. And we're going to give the boar, I guess the boar. Yeah, might as he's going to do 50 damage regardless. I just, oh, there's the melon armor we needed. I shouldn't have done that. That would have been so much better on him. Well, I'm going to freeze that just in case something goes wrong this turn, which it can. Any lineup can be defeated. It's all a game of matchups. He's almost up to 50-50 already. And our boar is 40, 30, our boar is, yeah, see, this is why we needed melon armor up front. Because that's going to be a problem. The bus is going to go through. He's got a similar lineup to ours. It's very strong. So that's not great. The melon armor would have saved me there. Which is exactly why we're going to throw it on the boar now. And also this pair. And then another boar. And then we end the turn. And see, we're up to a 50-50 and a 49-44. And it's all about the matchups. I'm pretty sure we're going to win this one. I don't see a lot that's going to stop me. Considering the boar is going to heal himself along the way. I hate when they do that. Oh, we're up against 1010 flies though, actually. That's gonna cause some damage. We got a bus up though. The bus will help, the boar can heal himself, but 1010 flies is actually a lot to get through. And as long as the fly doesn't kill the boar, the boar. Well, we'll see. I think they can only summon one more fly. Unless he's level 2, I'm not sure how that works. I think we're okay though. Because now it's just, yep, we're definitely okay. We had 50 15 plus a bus left over. And that's a victory. So that's a pretty good start. Okay, this time we found a peacock fairly early on, right at the start of round uh, three. And we got two ducks to sell. They're going to boost its health a little bit, and that's actually going to make a pretty big difference for it. So we're going to throw it up front, and then I'm going to do something maybe slightly controversial here. I'm going to combine these two, and then I'm going to sell the beaver. That's going to give extra health to both of those. So the peacock is already a 1-8. Then I'm going to buy another mosquito for now. I'm going to roll once because I don't really want a horse. Might hold on to that though. Then we're pretty much going to take that in behind just for a boost and that because we can sell it for pretty good money later. I'm going to save both cupcakes just because I have a hunch. Now hopefully I start against something fairly weak. Well, we'll survive the cricket hits. We'll take the cricket out. We'll trade. Oh, melon armor for our pig. Okay, they have a pretty good summoning build already. Didn't really expect this to happen, but bumblebee power. We win. Second trophy. No lives lost. So my hunch was kind of correct. We do have a crab. So what we can do is cupcake you, cupcake you. We're going to sell you. Mm, then we're going to bring a crab in. That's going to be a 314 crab now. That's just going to be a nice anchor for our team for a while. I don't want to combine these two yet because I don't want to boost forward to the next level. Can't really do anything else. So we're just going to spin, I guess, for now. And um, really, that's about it. At least we got a peacock. We can throw that on there next round. But I think we're probably pretty well ahead of the curve right now. We should beat most teams, depending on matchups, obviously. But for example, my peacock took up most of their team. Then they got to deal with everything left, including a badger. So then the next round, nothing exciting, but we throw that on there, we get a squirrel again. Squirrels are starting to be the bane of my existence in a strange way. So we're going to save that meat and roll once. Um, interesting, we got some good stuff. So I'm going to put a giraffe behind the peacock to get it going for now. I'm also going to give that garlic armor. But I'm probably also going to save you and you for next round. And I want to give the meat to the crab to make it an 814. But my peacock is now a 310 already. Make that a 39 after it took a hit, but it's going to get its strength back as we go. Uh, the horse summoning build is so annoying to deal with early. I see why people use it because it's super strong, but for me it's just super annoying to do it. So those of you out there doing it, stop. Okay, so this time we're going to double down on the giraffe. Since I think we're going to get another giraffe, I'm actually going to take a risk and sell that. And then we're going to put a camel up front because if we get the camel tough enough from the giraffe, it's just everything's going to boost the peacock in a big way. So let's also save that in case we happen to get a turtle for melon armor. I'm also going... Oh, we got the second giraffe already. This might turn out to be a good one, provided our luck stays this way. A skunk is interesting, but now the giraffe is going to boost both the peacock and camel every single turn. Like this. That's going to add up to big boost. But this also more or less locks us into the, this kind of build. Which is fine, it should carry us fairly far. Especially with our super crab in the back. Uh, as you can tell, it's pretty much just going to tear through everything. Bumblebee. 
draw. I should really start unfreezing some of these things. I don't know why I didn't. That was really stupid of me. Well, I think I'm overdue to give this crab a meat bone because that's going to make a big difference should anything make it there. Then I think I want to bring a parrot into the fold. I might regret this decision, but I'm going to unfreeze you and you. I'm going to put a parrot here because he's going to copy what the giraffe does at the end of turn. So he should give two friends plus one plus one or he himself will get plus one plus one. Either way, I'm okay with that. We have a hippo also. We're going to save that hippo for a second. I'm hoping to get something and I don't really know what that is yet. I'm formulating a plan in my mind, but it's very messy and excited. So right now I'm just going to give the peacock that. But now I need to see what the parrot's going to do. So it's a 6-3 now and it doesn't actually do anything behind the giraffe. So that was a waste of a parrot. I was hoping that would have some really cool effect. But we're going to have a peacock now that's, ooh, we're working towards a very strong shark. So hopefully, ooh, I was hoping we'd get there before now because that's not great. But this makes me feel better because now we can boost the hippo and the parrot before laying either of them down. So we're going to have to sell the crab, unfortunately. We put a lot of money and resources into it, but that's the name of the game sometimes. Now we're going to put the parrot here because he's going to copy what the hippo does. So every time he knocks something out, he's going to gain plus two, plus two. If we can get those two leveled up, they'll both be doing the same thing. Then we still have this setup behind us. Actually, we're going to move him here too. We want that hippo being boosted. The peacock's on its own at the rear. It'll, whatever, it'll deal with that. Oh, we're going to have a higher level everything. Oh, this is going to be, this is going to be good. So let's see how this, they only have four idiots. Um, but they are very strong idiots at the same time. So that's not great. We are going to knock out the hippo, but we're going to trade. The dog's going to kill us. Our peacock. That's not great. That was a bad matchup. So we're going to give you an upgraded. So he's going to be even better than the hippo, really. I should have bought that first, maybe. I do really want that hippo to be stronger, though. A lot of stuff banks on him. We're going to freeze that for next time. The peacock will stack next time because he's kind of an afterthought right now. That's fine by me. So those two are going to step up just a little bit. And hopefully, yeah, this is more agreeable. Oh, it's smart putting the snake behind that because he's going to hurt lots of things. But that actually upgraded the peacock. So that's almost to my advantage. Not quite, but almost. This is also going to hurt a lot. I need some better armor on the hippo. That's what I need. And he's dead. Oh, and you're dead too. Oh, this is such a bad matchup for us. That's a really smart team build. I wish I had a snake like that. Okay, and now we also have a monkey. So basically we're going all in on the hippo. So if I take you away, hippo goes here. We need garlic armor for the hippo or the other one. So you're going to boost the hippo. You're going to copy the hippo. You're also going to boost the hippo. I'm actually going to get rid of this and then just give the hippo that. And we got garlic armor, so we still have a fighting chance. Then we're going to roll one more time. We can upgrade the hippo with that and that. I'm not going to bother with the peacock anymore. He's old news. So the hippo is now going to jump all the way up to 1718 with the 1419 parrot behind. Hopefully we don't fight any superpowered dogs again because those are getting old. I did. I need a hippo to be uh, leveled up one more time. Then he'll be super strong because as it is, he's not enough of a carry for us. We won that, but not by a lot. So we're going to throw that on the hippo. I need him to be one more level up. The parrot actually does a better job of it than he does because he's level 2. So in saying that, I'm going to roll once. Okay, we got the hippo upgrade. That's fantastic. Uh, interestingly, I could instead put the tiger behind the parrot. That would make the hippo, I think, use his ability twice. So the hippo will gain plus 6, plus 6 every time he knocks something out. I think for now we're maybe going to freeze that. I might experiment with that later because that would be really fun to do but that's being very vulnerable for the hippo. So I think we're actually going to go ahead and boost the parrot for now because I need him to survive more damage. So the hippo is up to 23, 24. The parrot is 17 and 12. I can't remember what round we're on, so I'm not really sure how well that's going to work. Depends on what we're going to fight because that with... Yeah, we can't fight that because it is armor. That's sad because that was shaping up to be a really good team. This one, it's still early on. We're getting a lot of fish, so I'm just going to stack the fish. I'm going to front load and make a super fish if I can. Because we're already well ahead of the curve. Like our fish is 9998. He's got to go through all of these. But then we still have a 510 crab, a 37 peacock, and a 24 dog, which will be replaced soon because, well, the dogs don't scale quite like they used to. But the crab's going to kill that squirrel. We still had 17 health left over. And that fish is going to get buffed by the giraffe every single turn right now. So I think what we're going to do is maybe replace a dog with a kangaroo or I might actually wait for stronger units before I start reinvesting. Like I think perhaps a swan is a better choice than the dog because it's going to get us money every round. Then since I can't really buy anything here, I'm maybe going to add honey to the swan. It's going to be my goalkeeper for a while and you never know when that's going to come in handy. Two things of melon armor already. Wow. 
I didn't, uh, that must have been some luck to get that. I think we're still going to be okay here. Because the crab's going to take him out, then I got a peacock, plus a bumblebee after the swan. But that's really, really long odds to get two melon armors already. That requires two turtles and two red pills. And now thanks to our swan, we've got two extra coins to spend. One extra coin to spend. Didn't get anything really good on our first roll. Let's hope for something better now. I will take garlic armor. Yeah, especially kind of in these lower levels. Well, we're getting under now actually, so I'm going to need to start finding some better stuff. There's a turtle, so I can potentially make some better armor soon. So I'm going to save that for the fish next time. What I'm going to do is trade out a, the crab, because I'm going to boost all those, and I'm going to throw a dolphin in there somewhere probably there. Because especially this early on, that five damage can actually usually take something out entirely. That's going to hurt everything. Oh, but those puffer fish are going to attack back again. I see what they're trying to do. But they've got to get through my 12, 14 fish, and they're not going to. Oh, those two are going to hurt us now. So they actually might. Well, I'm going to survive their elephant, maybe. Sure am, but those two are going to attack. Yeah, we're still going to be okay, because I'm going to one-shot these. They don't get a chance to attack again. That's a fun build, though. Now, we've got two turtles, but we played that game before. That's not really good, so I'm just going to boost the fish while I can. I'm not going to leave a turtle frozen for very long, because it's taking up valuable real estate. And getting a red pill isn't super common. We did get a hippo now, though. So, a hippo's going to ride probably... Just somewhere here at the back for now. I'm not entirely sure how I want to utilize that, if I want to utilize that. Maybe if I give it some extra that, and then um, we could throw it up front and see if it can carry itself or not. If we fight a summon heavy team, it will chew through the summon heavy team, getting stronger as it goes. If we don't, though, we'll be in trouble. But I think we could take out this because that's going to summon. That's also going to summon. So by the time we get to their hippo, I think we're going to be able to hit it pretty hard, depending on how all this goes. Because we're going to not survive their chick, though. Well, that's okay. We got a 15-19 fish to deal with the rest of their team. Which seems up to the task. And we still had uh, 20 health to go. So now provided I don't do anything stupid, we should be sitting pretty strong. I just don't know whether to feed the hippo or the fish at this point. The hippo is going to scale better. So I'm going to do the hippo. I'm not going to give it garlic armor yet, because it might be better with more attack right now. But I'm not entirely sold on that myself. I'm going to keep that to probably feed to the hippo and maybe a shark to maybe put in place of the swan. Okay, I guess this one's going to get replaced. That way, by the time we get to the end, we'll be able to defend ourselves. We're going to roll once. Oh, a monkey. We're definitely taking out the dolphin for the monkey. Then we're going to feed him more. Oh, no, we can't afford that yet. But that's okay, because we're getting plus three every turn for the hippo. Actually, I'm going to go all in on the hippo. I'm going to move the giraffe to feed the hippo. So he's getting plus four, plus four every single turn. Then I probably will also swap out the giraffe as soon as I can. Because if I could get a snake or something behind the hippo, that would be even better. They have a lava background. What do we do? A stronger hippo. They know. Well, we're almost going to kill their hippo thanks to my extra boost, but I think we're probably going to lose this one because that's a really, really tough lineup to chew through. Yeah, safe to say we lost, but I understand why, but we're going to scale super quickly now. So we're giving you garlic armor instead. We're also going to give you extra that stuff. I think we're also going to give up on the giraffe for now because we're going to have something better. A cow for now even because that's going to put our hippo all the way up to 1620. Plus for now since we don't need a cow there it's not very useful we're going to scale that back one and we're going to put you right there because that's also going to help the shark. No we're going to put you there because I still need the monkey helping you. Confusing? Sure it is. Uh it is going to lose to that. Out comes the bus to help take them out. That's pretty strong. Yeah we're good. Trophy number seven. It did give us a mammoth, but I don't really like the mammoth. I'd much rather have a boar. So if the game wanted to give us one of those, that would be fine. I'm just going to freeze that for now. And it gave us a boar. Nice. I think you're probably going to come out. Actually, I think the shark is also probably going to come out because they have parrots as well. So monkey to the back, you to the back, you there. Nope, you there. Definitely want to put garlic armor on you. Then I want to put a parrot behind you to copy your ability. Because before you attack, you're going to gain plus two, plus two for now. Then we're going to freeze you. And I think this might work out pretty good ultimately. Or maybe it won't. This is a complete disaster. But I think I'm going to like this. Because even if the board doesn't manage a lot, like just dies to that, we still got lots of uh, firepower down our lineup. Not enough to defeat this team though. Wow, that team was stacked. Another loss for us. But good news for us, because we're basically going to have a upgraded boar behind our boar. Uh, this always happens to us too. We could just make the boar double down on what it's doing. This is basically the situation we had before. But I'd rather have two idiots doing the same thing. I just wish they were somewhere up closer to 30-30. Because these are all very strong, but if I went into one like with 30, we're pretty much doomed. Uh, this team seems like an agreeable matchup till we get to the end. But maybe by the time we're there, we'll have the strength to kind of beat that. 
So the boar is going to upgrade. He's going to survive that. He's not going to survive this. But then our parrot is going to go to work doing the same thing the boar just did. So he's going to upgrade, but he's going to take out that. Oh, we're going to lose to the bison on the end, I think. Wait. Wait. No, we're going to lose by one. Two. Oh, if we had to survive one more turn, we could have got a level two board. We would have just steamrolled everything to the end. It was that close. 